in record. So last time we were doing this pro, uh, example on Excel, okay. Uh, this is the same example that we did in the lecture, uh, lecture that. So we have to maximize this function uh, subject to these conditions. So we use the solver and then uh, we did it actually in the solver, we did it. Uh, so maybe I can set it up over here. Maximize, okay, and uh, I can make it a little bit bigger, okay, maximize, and then I have to maximize what, uh, seven times x1 and x2, okay, so unknowns, Unknowns are x1. You can do, uh, you can set it up this problem in a variety of ways. Okay, so maximize. So the uh, coefficients for the maximizations are 150, 175. We have to maximize it. Okay, so the maximized value will be uh, that is the this value. Okay, so this will be equal to. So these are the unknown variables. So initial values are, so unknown values. So the values are just assume one and one, okay? And then based on these values, so the maximized value will be, that is the objective function value will be this value multiplied by this, and then plus 175. times uh, this value. So based on this, for example, uh, three and four, this value will change, okay? So later on, our solver function will find these values. And the constraints, so the constraint is the, first constraint is the coefficients for material constraint, material, Material constraint. So material constraint. Material constraint coefficients are seven and eleven, and uh, it should be less than or equal to seventy-seven. Okay, so for the alignment, uh, let's move this value over here. And like maybe you can highlight this value as well. That this value have to be maximized. And then the uh, time constraint. Okay. Eight. And then it should be uh, less than or equal to. So can you see what I am typing over here on Excel, just to confirm? Yes. Okay. Yes, I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Uh, storage constraint one, storage uh, constraint one. So that is for X one. Mm -hmm. So it should be, uh, it should be, Less than uh, less than or equal to uh, six, and this is the constraint which is equal to the value which is in x one. Okay, so this constraint should be less than or equal to six, and then the storage storage constraint uh, two, and then this is also. Uh, less than or equal to nine, okay? Uh, six, right? And then in addition, there are uh, positivity constraint. Okay, is everything right? 
Yes. Mm, except this one. X1 should be less than or equal to nine. And then X2 should be less than or equal to 10. So this is should be, it should be X2. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I think I have set it up over here. Mm. And then the uh, positivity constraints are that uh, all X1 and X2 are positive. So that we can even put it into, into the uh, um, solver add-in. So we have solver add-in. So for example, file options, if you don't have the solver add-in, so we can add in from this option command. Okay, so I have already added it. So my Excel is not responding now. What happened? Hmm. Okay, so a positivity constraint. Okay, so solver uh, add in. So where is that? Home. Uh, and then where is this solver adding? So this will be in the data command, data, okay, data, and then the data analysis or under the what if, and here, data analysis, no. So scroll seek data table and where is the solver add-in? I don't know, maybe the solver add-in is uh, not installed. If you cannot see it over here, then you can go to file, options, and uh, add-ins and go. And then solver and it shows that it's there, but I cannot see it. Something is happening. Cannot see the solver adding. Okay, let's do one thing. Options, add-ins, Excel adding. I remove from here solver adding over here. I removed it, and now I turn it on again. Yeah, now it has appeared. You see, sometimes uh, Microsoft Excel uh, gives you some trouble, okay? Earlier it was not shown over here, but now I just turned it off and turned it on. Now it is open here. So now click Solver, okay? And then uh, in the Solver add-in, so I have to maximize this. So it will be E11, set the objective, it's E and 11. And by changing values, I want to change these values, B13 and C13, these values I want to change and they're subject to the constraint. So I need to add constraint. So I need to add a constraint. So cell references, uh, I need to add this constraint. Okay, but I think I need I, I forgot one thing to do in this model. This model is not complete, okay? So I will click cancel. I will click close. First, I need to put the formulas for this model as well, okay? So, so for the alignment, I just put it like this over here. I need to put the formula for this. Without the formula, it will not work.
Hmm. Without the formula, it will not work. So uh, then I think uh, I need to put the formula. So formula is uh, this one. 7x1 plus 11x2, OK? So this is x1 and then x2, 7x1, 7 times x1 plus 11 times x2. This one. And then the second formula is 10x1 plus 8x2 is equal to 10 times x1 plus 8 times x2 plus this one. Okay. I think these are the two values which I needed. Okay, so now I try the solver again. So it says that the upset the objective. Objective is this uh, F11. Yeah, objective is F11. Have to be uh, maximized by changing variables B13 and C13. So B13 and C13 and subject to the constraint. So constraint is that uh, this value Okay, that which is uh, 7x1 plus 11x2. This value should be uh, this sign less than or equal to is already by default there, so we don't need to change. Should be less than or equal to this value, 77. And add. Uh, it has been added. Now it is asking for the second one. The so second constraint is this value, which is 10x1 plus 8x2, should be less than or equal to this constraint, 80 and add it. And then the third constraint, third constraint is that x1 should be less than or equal to 9. So, uh, uh, well, this value okay, should be less than or equal to 9. Add. And then uh, this value x2 uh, should be less than or equal to um, and then click OK. So now I have seen that four constraints have been added. And uh, four constraints have been added. And then that's with this what is the third constraint. Uh, D14 should be less than or equal to F14. So what is D14? D14 is D14. Yeah, this one and then this one, OK. And then B16, yeah, all these constraints have been hopefully added. And the fifth constraint, the positivity constraint is by default uh, selected by making these unconstrained variables non-negative, okay? So these unconstrained variables are X1 and X2, and uh, they are non-negative. So we will be only looking at the positive values. And select a solving method. So in this case, all the equations are linear. So we can conveniently use the simplex LP algorithm, linear programming algorithm. Okay. And now after setting up, you will hit solve. So it gives us that the solver has found a solution. All constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied keep the solver solution. So you can see that the solver solution is 1413.889 and the uh, values are 4.88 and 3.88, okay? And in this case, you can see that by 4.88 and 3.88, the material constraint has been fully met, the time constraint has been fully met, whereas the storage constraints are have not been uh, fully uh, met over here. Okay, so we can keep this uh, solution and uh, we also can generate uh, two reports. One is the answer report and the sensitivity report. In fact, up to this point, I have already done in the last lab. I just have repeated it. Uh, now I want it in detail, uh, some little bit, some detailed uh, to discuss these reports, the answer report and the sensitivity report. So you can select these 
two reports over here and then click OK. And then you will see that two more tabs will be generated in this uh, Microsoft Excel. And these generate, uh, tabs will hold, hold the reports for this problem. So do you have any questions up to now? Okay, so uh, then let's see what is the what uh, what's there in these reports. So in the answer uh, report, so you will see that uh, it will show that Microsoft Excel 16.0 answer report. So and then there will be some information. It will show how the method was solved and how much how long it time how long it took for uh, Excel to do it and uh, how many iterations and then this was done. Okay. Here, yeah, in the answer, it is giving us the uh, final answers. So the problem was to maximize. Uh, the original value was 325 and the final value was 1413. So uh, this is the final value uh, which we got over here, 1413. Original value was uh, 325 because of uh, we took the initial values as one and one. Okay, so that doesn't make uh, any. Uh, so the final value is one four one three. So the maximum profit is one four one three point eight eight nine. Okay, so now this answer also tells us about the uh, values which were changed. So x one and x two initially we took one and one values, but finally we got our answers at four point eight eight and three point. 88. Okay. Okay. So, and whether these values were integer, uh, it says that it says contain. So this means that it is not integer. These were the we do, we did not consider the them as integer. We, could, we these are the uh, and these are not the integer. So it shows as, as contain. Okay. Okay. So the third thing is. Uh, it will be tell it will tell us about the constraints which are the uh, binding constraints and which are the uh, non binding constraints so as we can see that in this figure these two constraints material constraints and the time constraints uh, they were the uh, binding constraints whereas these two of the storage constraints were the uh, non binding constraints so in fact we totally we applied four constraints two of them were non binding two of them were the uh, binding. So binding constraints were those which were fully met, which were fully met. So that means uh, uh, here the slack is zero. Here the slack is zero. Uh, but for the non-binding slack uh, constraints, there was some slack that was left, okay? So this was the answer report. So, so answer report is more or less the same as uh, our original sheet and uh, in a little bit of formatted way, the report is giving us some of the uh, values. Okay, so storage constraint one is represented by uh, X1, storage constraint two, it is represented by X2. It also tells us that and where these constraints are available. Okay, so this was the answer report. And now let's see what is the sensitivity report. Okay, so sensitivity report gives us some additional uh, information, uh, which uh, we cannot uh, see in this uh, sheet or in this answer report. Okay, so what is that additional uh, information? Okay, so let's look at those additional information in this case. So it shows over here, uh, that uh, it shows over here is that uh, we have got uh, these uh, values 4.88 and 3.88, okay? And just ignore this reduced cost uh, value at this moment. 
just you can see that the objective uh, coefficients are 150 and 175. That means for the objective functions, we have to multiply these by 150 and 175. Uh, the last two columns are uh, important. Okay. Uh, it's uh, the last two columns shows that, for example, if this uh, uh, x1, uh, this objective coefficient, this objective coefficient, 150 and uh, 68, uh, can be uh, 150 can be increased by an amount 68.75, and also, uh, or or in another way, it can also be decreased by 38.6 without changing this answer. Okay, without changing this answer. And similarly, this uh, uh, second coefficient 3.88 uh, cannot, uh, may, will not change if the objective coefficient for this 175, 60 and 55 can be respectively increased 60 or can be decreased by 55. So if, for example, if the objective coefficients was instead of 150, and then we increase it to 68.75, okay? If we increase it to 68.75, then will the answer of this change? According to this, the answer will uh, not change, okay? So that we can see, okay? So for example, uh, I have this uh, model over here. Let me copy this sheet another one. Okay, make a copy of this sheet. Okay, I, so that I can make any changes into that sheet and don't disturb the original one. So this is the uh, copied sheet. Now, for example, according to the sensitivity report, I can change uh, this 150 by an amount 68.75. So say, okay, so if I change from 150 to say uh, 200, okay? And then I do it, okay? So let's, uh, let me do it the, uh, let me reset it, one and one, okay? I reset these values to one and one and then <clears throat> I change this 150 to 200. So will I get the same answer or not? So according to this sensitivity report, we should I should get the same answer, 4.88 and 3.88. Of course, the uh, maximum, uh, this value will be different, but these values will be same, okay? So now I have changed uh, 150 to 200. So solver. I think everything has been set up in this over here, or if not, then just uh, it is uh, here. And uh, by changing cells here, and then the subject to constraints, okay, something like that. So let me solve it. So solve it, solver has found a solution. And here you can see that the answers are have not been changed. Right? The answers have not been changed. Although uh, the, of course, this uh, maximum uh, profit uh, have changed. Earlier it was 1413, now it's 1658 but the optimum values for X1 and X2 have not been changed. So this is what the, uh, uh, this is what the uh, sensitivity report is telling us for our original sheet, okay? Okay, so may similarly we, for the allowable decrease, uh, but how about, uh, okay. Now it says that we can, I can allow, I can increase up to 68.75. So how about I increase 150 by say 80. So 150 plus 80 is 230. So if I, instead of 200, I take 230. 
and then let's see what are the answers. I think this time the answer should change because it is more than the allowable increase. So I will solve it. And here you can see that the solution has been optimally achieved, but in this case, the answers are not same. Okay, eight and zero. And then in, in this case, one of the material constraint has also not been uh, fully uh, utilized. Okay, has not been fully utilized. So in this case, up to 68.75, the answers will not change. So for example, if I take 150 and then what was the sensitivity report saying? 150 and then plus 68, 150 plus 68 is, 150 plus 68, what is the answer? Can you tell? 218 Yeah, 200. Okay, let's take 218 over here. Okay, and then solver and then solve it. So you can see that 4.88, 3.88, and then answers did not change. Okay, just cancel it. If instead of, then I take 219. So solver and then solve it. Yeah, but now the condition has suddenly changed. Okay, so now uh, we are not getting the same answers. Okay, so this is the meaning of uh, uh, then this uh, of these values in the sensitivity report. So similarly, you can check it for the for the uh, decrease as well, and for the second as well. And uh, you can see how it happens. And I think uh, this uh, these are the answers when you perform one change at a time, if you perform two changes, then I think um, the answers may or may not change. So may or may not change. Uh, for, for this, I think this report does not provide uh, the answers for that when you simultaneously change these two answers. So perform one change at a time, and then you can see what is the effect on the answers. Okay, so this is the report for the variable cell. Okay, so the second is for the report for the uh, constraints. Yeah, this is very interesting to know that. Yeah, this will be, uh, this is also very useful. Uh, of course, first was also useful. Uh, but the second one is even more useful. The second one shows us these values, something like the shadow price. The shadow price. So shadow price is only uh, provided for the uh, constraints which were binding constraints. That is the material constraint and the time constraints. Uh, for because the store for the storage constraint and uh, for the two storage constraints, these were not the binding constraints. There is no uh, shadow price because there is still a uh, lack uh, available. Okay, so what does it mean? Okay, so it means that, uh, what is the material constraint? So you can see that uh, there were uh, two binding constraints, material constraint and the time constraint. So the material constraint was less than or equal to 77 and the time constraint was less than or equal to 80. Okay, so uh, this uh, shadow price shows that, okay, now you listen carefully, if we, uh, for example, this shadow price of 10.185 shows that if we increase 77 to, uh, to seven uh, by one, one unit, so if we increase 77 to say 78, uh, what will be the increase in the profit? Okay, if we, if we increase this constraint by one, what will be the increase in profit? So the increase in profit will be 10.818. Okay, and uh, similarly, uh, instead, if we increase the time constraint from 80 to 81, what will be the increase in profit? Increase in profit will be 7.87. So this is the meaning of the shadow price. Okay, so since the shadow price for the material constraint is higher than the time constraint, so it means that uh, this uh, problem is more sensitive towards the a material constraint, okay? That means if we want to, uh, if you somehow want to increase our uh, profitability, 
then maybe we can focus more on increasing the material constraint. That means uh, we want to have uh, more uh, the uh, we want to have the avail uh, more availability of the materials and then we can increase the profit in a better way rather than spending more time because spending more time will only increase 7.87 but uh, but having more materials avail uh, availability at at our uh, site uh, then we can have uh, and then we can have uh, uh, more uh, uh, profit in this case. So that we can also see it uh, in this. So for example, right now you can see that uh, uh, for the optimal case, uh, the profit is, so for the optimal case uh, here, the profit is 1413, okay? Now in this case, if I increase this from 77 to 78, Okay, if I increase from 77 to 78, and then I use the original values, 150 and 175. And the only change I have produced over here is that I have increased this material constraint by one. Okay, so I will apply the solver and then solve it. And the solver found the solution. So you can see that there is an increase in the profit and the increase in the profit is 1424 earlier it was 14 what was if you remember what was the value earlier one four one three so for one four one three and one one four one three point eight eight nine so this was the value so this is for example uh, this is uh, this was the value, right? One four one three. So what is the difference? This this is ten point one eight. So this is the same difference as is given in this sensitivity report. Okay. So that means uh, by increasing material constraint by one, so we have increased in the uh, profit of 10.185, okay? So, okay, so let's move back these values to the original values. And uh, 77, now I increase uh, the time constraint from 80 to 81. Okay, so what will be that? Uh, sorry, huh? I cannot hear you well. Can you check your? Can you please it to 82? Uh, 82? Yeah. 82. Uh, yes. Okay, we can increase to 82. Okay. So 82. Okay. So then data solver and solve. And we obtained this. Search. So we got one four two nine. So that is okay. So this one four two nine. So what is the difference now? Uh, this one four two nine minus previous the optimized solution was this fifteen point seven. But now this uh, has been increased. Uh, this uh, increase is by uh, changing uh, from eighty to eighty two. So for one, for a change of one, it will be divided by two. So it will be seven point. 87, 7.87, so that is, uh, yeah, the same. So for a unit change, that means uh, uh, for a unit change in the increase, so for a unit change in the increase of the constraint, what is the change in the profit? So in this case, then according to this uh, sensitivity report, so if you want to, increase any constraint, uh, then you will increase the constraint uh, uh, of uh, the materials to get the best results. Okay. And in addition, uh, this uh, table also tells us that uh, how much increase you can 
make. So for example, from 77, you can maximum, you can increase to like 11.4. If you will increase more than that, then there will be no further increase. Similarly, it also shows that we can maximum decrease from 77 by an amount 21. Of course, if you will decrease it, then the profit will also uh, decrease. So let's see what is the, what happens with the decrease. So let's change these values, uh, uh, x1, x2, uh, and s1. And uh, this is bring it to 80. And then from 77, I make it to 76, OK? So now, solver, solve. And I can see that now the value the profit value is 1403 so therefore therefore what is this value 1403 minus the optimized value before it is minus 10.1518 minus 10.18 yeah minus 10.1 so this is now a, a decrease so we, you can either increase or decrease so these are the maximum increases or maximum uh, decreases in these constraints. Uh, so this report also tells us that as well. Yeah, so is it clear, these reports? Yes. All right, good. Okay, so uh, that was uh, the linear programming uh, using solver in Excel. Um, we can also use this uh, 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 for uh, non-linear constrained uh, optimization as well, okay? So for example, if you have a, uh, any non-linear equation, then we can also solve it. So for example, if we have this problem, not only for linear, but uh, for non-linear as well. So for example, if we have uh, this problem, okay? So this is uh, maximize 1.2 X plus two Y minus Y cube subject to two X plus Y is less than or equal to two X is greater than Y zero Y is greater than uh, zero. So uh, this problem can be also solved by the solver. So for example, if we have X and Y, X and Y, and then uh, X and Y, for example, we take one and one. Yeah, if we take X and Y as one and one and maximize, maximize what? Maximize. Uh, the coefficients are this, okay? So, so we have to co um, so we have to maximize it. So it is equal to uh, one point two, one point two times x plus two times y and minus y cube. So it is 2.2. Okay. And then the constraint. So the constraint is uh, uh, this one. That is 2x plus y is less than or equal to 2. So it is equal to 2 times x plus y y this is the constraint it should be 
less than or equal to two. Okay, so it's a, this much model. So solver. So now it's solver. Uh, we have to maximize it. Maximize it by changing the values of these and subject to a constraint subject to a constraint is that this value should be less than or equal to two and i click ok and these uh, are the constraint in this case uh, it will be better for you to use the non-linear model because this is we are solving the non-linear uh, function so solve it and uh, solver found a solution all constraints are optimally optimality conditions are satisfied so what is the solution so x the value of x is 0 0.65 and 0 0.68 and the maximum value of x is 1.83 and this constraint has been fully utilized so that we can see it from here so uh, i mean essentially the non-linear optimization is uh, and nothing much uh, different than the uh, linear uh, optimization in Microsoft Excel. Okay, so uh, next is uh, now uh, something which we can do in the uh, MATLAB. Okay, so let me try the MATLAB. So we can also do the linear programming uh, algorithm into the uh, MATLAB as well. Uh, by default, uh, the uh, line, uh, the function for the MATLAB uh, for the linear programming is uh, actually this function is called lin program, lin program. Lin probe. So if I pick help lin probe, so it will provide the help about this function. Okay. That is help lin probe. So lin program is the linear programming function and it has some uh, various uh, formats over here. Uh, actually, uh, by default, uh, this uh, function is uh, not installed into the MATLAB function. So if you will uh, do, uh, if you will try to use this function, it will ask you to install the data analysis tool pack. So you have to uh, follow that link and then uh, install the data analysis tool pack, tool pack and then we can, you can use that uh, function. Okay, so this uh, function has various uh, uh, formats and then these formats can be used for the uh, linear programming functions. So let's try it with the help of some uh, example, okay? So if we take the same example as we have done here, uh, here, this one, so uh, we can do the same example over here, okay? So how will we uh, do it, okay? So for this, uh, we will uh, use uh, a, a form uh, for the this linear programming function. Because this linear programming uh, function in the MATLAB can be used in various formats. So maybe we will use this um, here, uh, this one. So x is equal to lin program f 
A B A E Q B E Q L B U B. Okay. Okay. So there are many uh, parameters in this. So it defines a set of lower and upper uh, bounds uh, for the design variables x, so that the solution is in the range uh, of uh, lower bound and the uh, upper bound. So use empty matrices for L, B, and U, B if no bounds exist. Set B, I, and is unbounded below. So, okay, let's do it uh, uh, with this. Okay. So for example, I have a question. Uh, question, yes. So can we use this uh, linear proc uh, function in our uh, uh, the lab assignment that you gave us to solve the, the last problem where we have to find the uh, structural analysis problem? For the structural analysis, that is a structural analysis problem is not a linear programming problem. Oh, okay. That is uh, just the solution of the equations. So uh, no, I in that last assignment I did not give any linear programming except the uh, one with the simplex method. But that is uh, no. But I no in the in the in the lab assignment I did not give you any linear programming. Uh, okay, whereas okay. in the written assignment I gave you the problem for the simplex method for the other okay. assignment number two. You can just use it for like checking if it's correct. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I will give okay. you, I will give one uh, question about this in the lab assignment number three. Not, uh, yeah, I have not done. For, uh, for this structural analysis problem that is, simp uh, that is simply the uh, finding of the solution of the system of the equations. Okay, so, uh, so just remember, because in this case, uh, uh, I want to solve this equation, but I cannot just copy and paste it over here. So just remember this problem. So we have now have done this problem many times. So we uh, remember these uh, formulae, okay? And uh, then uh, let's define some of the uh, functions. Okay, so uh, where is this? Yeah. So uh, we will uh, use this uh, form of this MATLAB. So as I have said that we will use this form. Uh, yeah, X is equal to lin program, okay, this one. So let me put it over here as a comment. Okay, so this one, so we need F. So what is F? F is equal to, in this case, uh, F is a column matrix. So F is a column matrix uh, for, so F is, uh, okay, F uh, in this case will be this, uh, remember that. F are the coefficients for this, uh, uh, because this is a linear programming um, problem, okay? So there will be uh, constant uh, coefficients over here. And then of course the powers of X and X2 will be one. So F are the coefficients of uh, this uh, objective function, 150 and 175, okay? But we will take minus 150 and minus 175. Okay, so uh, why? Yeah, uh, because actually uh, this uh, lin program um, function in MATLAB uh, by default uh, calculates the uh, minimum minimum value of the problem, uh, minimizes the function. Okay, minimizes the function. So here our problem is to maximize the function. So if we want to minimize the function, uh, uh, if we want to maximize the function. So then therefore we have to use the negative of that function. Uh, and then in that way, uh, we will be finding the minimization of the function, okay? Um, a maximization of the function. So therefore we will use, uh, we will change the sign of the F. So it will be minus 150 
semicolon minus 175. So this will be a column vector, okay, 150 and 75. Okay, so this is one variable. What is A? A is a square matrix for the constraints. So A is a matrix for the constraints, seven, 11, 10, and eight, okay? So uh, that will be the seven, 11, and 10, and eight. A will be this matrix. So 7, 11, 10, and 8. So if I go back to this, 7, 11, 10, and 8. Okay. So we have, I have represented 150, 175, 7, and 11, I have represented. And then there will be a B matrix as well. Yeah, A and then B. And what will be B matrix? So B matrix will be uh, B okay. matrix. Huh? Uh, 77 and 88, okay, 77 and 88. Okay, so V matrix will be 77 and 88. Okay, so that will be B. And next, uh, there are uh, no equality constraints in this example. So, yeah. So in this case, AEQ and BEQ are the uh, equality constraints, but there are no equality constraints. So therefore we will take AEQ is equal to uh, zero, 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 okay? And uh, BEQ we will also take uh, zero, zero okay you place the o not zero mm, okay yeah. Mm, yeah zero zero okay so we'll take zero zero okay and uh, the lower and then the lower and upper bound so in this case the uh, what is the lower and upper bound these are related with the values of x1 and x2 so the lower bound is uh, bound, uh, lower bound is zero because uh, we are not taking any negative values so i think the in this case the formulation of lin program is a little bit different than we did in the excel because in the excel we took those uh, uh, constraints x1 and x2 uh, as the, the part of those constraints. But here, here the two real constraints are like uh, material and the uh, time constraints. So we are taking the lower bound as uh, zero, zero. That means the values will not be negative, okay? And the upper bound are, upper bounds are, these are the upper constraints for the storage, okay? So uh, nine and six okay and i think the lower bound uh, lo uh, i should define the lower bound again okay because i put it like a column matrix a row matrix so zero comma zero okay like this so now i have defined all these values over here and now i can put uh, this command uh, like this, and then see what the answer we get. Okay, so yeah. So optimal solution was found. So X is equal to 6.5185 and 2.8519. Uh -huh. So this is not the same solution which I, uh, which we got before. Is it something wrong? Minus 150, minus 175. Um, um, maybe it's because of the quality constraints. 
Uh, because which... in the, I mean, in the specifications, they said that they should be empty matrix, but here we have like zero, values of zero. Does it, uh, is it correct way to show that this is an empty matrix? Uh, yes. So for example, over here, what is this? Uh, define the set of uh, uh, lower and upper uh, bounds on the design variables x so that the solution is in the uh, range. Yeah, and use empty matrices uh, for lower bound and upper bound if no bounds exist. Uh, you use yeah, for LB and UB, okay? And AEQ uh, a is equal to uh, BEQ is uh, for the equality constraints. Mm -hmm. But there are, uh, these are not the equality constraints, okay? So oh, okay. that's why we took them as zero. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, let's, let me see what happened. Uh, let me define these functions again, okay? So if instead of uh, this, I take, uh, I think without columns, I take, if I take like this, and F and uh, A is same as before, and B, I take uh, without these columns. And a eq is same as before. Uh, B eq is uh, with this. And uh, what else? Um, what else? Lb. UB okay it's fine so now if I apply X uh, the optimal solution is um, 6.518 the same it's the same mm -hmm. mm. Same actually, so I'm not getting the same answer. Why is it that? Uh, oh. mm -hmm. um, uh, I have a question. So, do we need to like uh, transpose them or to get the values maybe? To transpose them? Mm, transposing, yeah, I think it's the same. The answer is same. I think the function is, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, so it just takes the values, so yep. we don't need to transpose it. Yeah, yeah, I know. yeah. I think don't need, we don't need to transpose it. Yeah, actually, I did it uh, before, and I was getting the same answer. I think something is happening which is not uh, familiar at this point. Uh, anyway, I will, I will see this uh, uh, issue, and then I will get back to you uh, how to correct it. Okay, later on. Okay. Could you then uh, upload the correct yep. like, uh, way? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, later on, I will I will try to find out the mistake, which what's the mistake which is happening. Thank you. OK, next is uh, uh, about the uh, linear regression Okay, in Excel. Okay, so what we can do is uh, for the uh, um, if, for example, if we have some data, um, 
least squares regression. So for example, if we have uh, a data, something like this, uh, the values of X and Y, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, uh, Y is here. So let me enter the data first, 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4, 4.5, and 5, 5.5. 5. Okay, so 5, uh, 0 0.5, 1, 1. 1.5, and 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4, 4.5, 5, 5.5. And y values are 0.53. 0 0 0.6, 1.5, 1.5, 2.06, 2.28, and 2.23, 2.7, 3, 2.42, 2.79. Okay. So uh, we already know that uh, we can represent, uh, for example, insert, uh, chart, and then we can represent them like this, okay? And uh, we also know that we can also add the trend line, add the trend line. And uh, by default, linear is selected over here and its trend line has been generated. So in this case, display equation on chart. Uh, yeah, so the equation of this has been generated. And the also the R square value. So it is 0 0.89. Or if we want to maybe just, you can just very easily check from here that which model it will it will fit well maybe the polynomial second order polynomial yeah it's uh, better than the linear linear over here okay but anyway let's uh, just uh, keep it as linear and then you can see it uh, so in this case, uh, we have this data. And then there is another uh, function in this uh, Microsoft Excel is that, which is called as the uh, data analysis tool pack. Tool pack. So, data, so with the solver, we also have this uh, data analysis tool pack, okay? So this data analysis tool pack also provides us some very useful information. So we can, if we want to use it, we need to click it. And under this tool pack, there are various types of analysis which we can perform. Here we can select the regression analysis. Regression, okay. What we want to see over here is that the regression analysis. And then we can click okay. And uh, we can click the input uh, Y range. Y range, input Y range is this and we can input the x range we can put the x range as over here and the uh we do not identify any labels and like that and we can create the a new worksheet yeah and the we can also put it there Okay, so just select the Y and X range over here and uh, uh, click the labels. 
the labels are maybe here and let's just remove it and then click okay so the a, a new sheet will open over here okay so this new sheet will give us the uh, data so what are those data so different uh, regression values so the r square value will as you can see that we have obtained this r square value over here which was 0 0.8923 and it has performed the linear regression over here and then uh, this is the r square values and what are the uh, values of what are where are the coefficients the so coefficients are 0 0.43 and 0 0.59 so we can find these coefficients uh, of this here where are the coefficients um first values yeah oh yes here these are the coefficients okay and then these you can also find uh, the other uh, values which are not available in this trend line so standard error uh, uh, for the intercept as well so we can find these standard errors and then other uh, confidence intervals like that so uh, this is the uh, data analysis tool pack. So this data analysis tool pack, not only you can use for uh, one variable, but also you can use for uh, more than two variables as well. Mm -hmm. So for this, I think I will recommend you to see the example 19.4 of the textbook as well. All right, so, so this was okay. for about the uh, data analysis tool pack. So, uh, okay, I will stop at this time today and then uh, uh, we will do some more uh, MATLAB or other lab related things in our next class. Okay, any questions about? So I have um, uploaded this data analysis uh, data pack. Is it uh, like we can download it from the official uh, site? Yes. Uh, yeah, it if is it like... is not, uh, if you don't see it over here in the, then just go to the Microsoft Excel and options and uh, add-ins and uh, Excel oh, okay. add-ins, and then it should be here. Okay. Yeah, analysis tool pack. Okay. Yeah, it should be here. If it is not selected, you should select it and then you can do it. Okay, so in your numeric uh, assignment number two, what are this? Yeah. So this is the assignment number two. So the first question is uh, about the linear programming, okay? So you have to show it with the simplex method. So that means the manual method, which you have to show it, okay? okay. The second problem is, uh, yeah, in this case, it is also linear programming, but you have to provide the graphical solution, okay? You don't have, you will not use the simplex method, okay? And the third problem is the linear regression. So, but uh, you have to provide, you have to calculate uh, those X, Sigma X, these uh, columns, etc., and then provide the answers. And then in this case, you will also have to provide uh, the solution using the multiple linear regression. Uh, so we can solve these problems in Excel, yes? You can solve these problems in Excel, but you will show all the columns like uh, Sigma X, Sigma X square, Sigma X, Y, like that. Okay. Yeah. yeah, solving the problem in Excel mean that we, uh, it will also mean that we don't have to show these sigma x, sigma y uh, met, uh, columns because uh, Excel can sh give you the answer directly as well. So solving the Excel does not mean uh, I want like this. I want to show those different columns. Like what is sigma x, sigma y, sigma x square, something like that. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. 